Hello again. I just want to do a follow-up on my last video that I put out last night about the Earth supposedly going through perihelion in its orbit around the Sun. And this is the point where the Earth is closest to the Sun and it's where it's moving its fastest and specifically where it hits the point of periapsis. Periapsis is right there where the circular orbit would kind of squash a little bit and become elliptical. And so this point at periapsis would be a point of pivotal change in an ellipse. So it's kind of, you're coming around, it's, it's kind of like the sharpest turn. I'm not saying that the uh, supposed Earth's orbit around the sun has a sharp turn, but it's, it is a bit squashed. So it's a moment when if, ever there's a time where you would feel the movement of the earth if the earth were really moving this would be it right now early january so do you feel the earth moving anybody has anybody felt it since i put out the video last night or many of you maybe already know that this uh fictitious perihelion nonsense so you know as i showed last night as per kepler's area laws the earth will slingshot because it wants to cover the same amount of area in equal time and so since that area is flat, you know, shorter and smaller, it makes it wider and makes it, you know, have to speed up to cover that same amount of area. Anyway, it's all nonsense. It's theoretical. It's good for video games and stuff. <laughs> it's not real. So I wanted to address everybody who says, it's like flying in an airplane, people, in the earth. Of course you're not going to feel the earth movement. Do you feel it when you're in an airplane? What is so disingenuous about that and how it's a... Um, non-equivalency logical fallacy or non-equivalent logical fallacy is that you're not doing the same motion. I do feel an airplane moving, of course, when I'm taking off or landing and, or if the pilot is banking, you know, or of course turbulence or anything, you feel that. But yeah, you know, you don't feel it much when it gets leveled out, but it's not the same thing. And to compare the two is ridiculous. And I'm going to crush that right now. Here's an animation I made. Now, if the plane flies like this, then you've got something. If the, if the airplane you're flying in is doing 360 spins, right? Just like the earth is, and it's going through perihelion where it speeds up and periapsis, the pivotal point of directional change. If you're doing all that, then you can compare the two. But when you're comparing like old people, and it's like driving in a car. No, unless your car is wiping out, spinning out and going down the embankment, then you may have an argument and say, yeah, they're similar. So like I said, this is the point when um, you should feel the earth moving. If there's at any point, that's this is the place we should feel it. And of course, the earth is immovable, non-moving, rock solid. Can you not right? see that? It's a lie. It's gaslighting us. It's They've gaslighted humanity for thousands of years. As, and they continue on. It's a grift. It's a big fat fantasy. It's a lie. The Bible says love of money is the root of all evil. Okay. So anyway, back to, they've been grifting us with this story. The earth's not moving. You don't feel it, of course, because it's not moving. Like I said, with the equatorial bulge of 14 miles high, this is what they say is happening to the earth. The poles are flattening. The equator's bulging 14 miles high. Well, that's rock, dirt, mud, everything solid, lifting up 14 miles high. This is what they got people believing. They're not even questioning it. Well, what about the water? Hello? Isn't the water going to move? Look at these pictures. Dead still. Dead still water. This disproves this nonsense. Just use your heads. This is common sense. You know, how they like to say, oh, you fly ruffles are denying science. You're science denial. You guys are logic and common sense deniers. That's way worse. Your science, half of it, most of it is fake. It's all a grift about money too. It's all about how do you get the taxpayer dollars? How do you get people to pay for your nonsense? Well, that's a whole nother series I'd like to get into about, you know, returning to the farm. And, and when the grifters come to you and, uh, whoa, you got to pay for my services. Oh, really? What's your services? I'm an archaeologist. Uh, what, what is that? We dig up stuff out of the door. Uh, and you got to pay for it. Uh, no, I don't. Get off my property. You know, or I'm an astrophysicist. And that does, we send rockets in space. No, you don't. It's all fake. Get out. Get off my property right now. You know, th that's a whole nother story. But the vast majority of it is all fake. 
It's all about money. It's all, it's the economy of when we moved off the farm and we moved into the cities. That's all it is. So, all right, I digress. Let me get back to the, you know, you don't feel the earth moving because it's like being in an airplane or driving in a car. Well, here, again, if it moves like this, then you've got a case. But if it moves like that and it's a car, you've just spun out down the embankment. If it moves like that and it's an airplane, you've got everybody flying all over the cabinet and you're gonna crash. <laughs> you know, so no. And also remember in the equatorial bulge, the poles are flattening and the equator is, is lifting up 14 miles high. It's bulging 14 miles high. So to make the airplane totally analogous to that, besides this spinning and orbiting and going through perihelion and the point of periapsis, you would also have to have the airplane slightly bulging on the sides due to the rotational speed and the top and the bottom compressing, like squashing, like the poles are said to be squashing. If you can show that, then you've got a comparison. Now, do you think the people inside that plane would actually be alive? Do you think they would at least not feel it, not be totally impacted? Do you think their soup wouldn't spill all over the place if they served soup on a plane? Uh, yeah. So, no, not a good comparison. Sorry, busted. And that's it. I think I'm going to put this animation out as a standalone animation so that you can just go ahead and find it here and just click on it. If anybody, you, you know, says they do a comparison and you don't have to hear this whole video of me, blah, blah, you know, rambling on here. You can just play the video. So maybe I'll put that out tomorrow or something and it'll just be called, you know, um, how an air. Well, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but you'll find it. You'll I'll use this as the thumbnail, right? Just this picture. Anyway. That's it. I hope that debunks. And I've got a lot more rotation stuff about the Earth's rotation, because like I've said in past videos, I think this is the strongest argument. You know, the fact that they say we're rotating and the fact that we're not rotating and there's no indications of rotation or movement at all. This Earth is rock solid, does not move ever. I'm not talking about earthquakes. Earth in its totality does not move. The world does not move. Okay? All right. So look forward to more stuff coming out. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys soon.